Please rise. Our opening hymn is found in the Breaking Bread, number 402, 402, Lord of all hopefulness, number 402. Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy, whose trust ever childlike no cares can destroy, be there ahead our waking and give us sweet pray. Your bliss in our hearts, Lord, at the break of the day. Lord of all eagerness, Lord of all faith, whose hands plans were skilled at the plain and the lathe, be there ahead our labors and give us, we pray, your strength in our hearts, Lord, at the noon of the day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of the Father, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. My sisters and brothers, in this Lenten time, a time of repentance and renewal of our hearts, let us again call to mind our sins, ask our good God to forgive us and strengthen us, and so prepare our hearts to celebrate these sacred mysteries of our salvation in Christ Jesus. I confess to Almighty God and Did to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. We invoke your mercy in humble prayer, O Lord, that you may cause us, your servants, corrected by penance and schooled by good works, to persevere sincerely in your commands, and come safely to the Paschal festivities through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once to your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, this is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I see how stiff-necked these people are. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with such great power and with so strong a hand? Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent, he brought them out, that he might kill them in the mountains and exterminate them from the face of the earth? Let your blazing wrath die down. Relent in punishing your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, 
and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in his punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. Please respond, remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Our fathers made a calf in Horeb and adored a molted image. They exchanged their glory for the image of a grass-eating bullock. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. They forgot the God who had saved them, who had done great deeds in Egypt, wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, terrible things at the Red Sea. Remember us, O Lord, as you know your people. Then he spoke of exterminating them, but Moses, has cho his chosen one, withstood him in the breach to turn back his destructive wrath. Remember us, O oh Lord, as you favor your people. <clears throat> Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, If I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is not true. But there is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that the testimony he gives on my behalf is true. You sent emissaries to John, and he testified to the truth. I do not accept human testimony, but I say this so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and for a while you were content to rejoice in his light. The works that the Father gave me to accomplish, these works that I perform testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. Moreover, the Father who sent me has testified on my behalf, but you have never heard his voice nor seen his form and you do not have his word remaining in you because you do not believe in the one whom he sent. You search the scriptures because you think you have eternal life through them. Even they, even they testify on my behalf, but you do not want to come to me to have life. I do not accept human praise. Moreover, I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I came in the name of my Father but you do not accept me. Yet if another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept praise from one another and do not seek the praise that comes from only God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. The one who will accuse you is Moses in whom you have placed your hope. For if you have believed Moses, you would have believed me because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ.
O Israel. How quickly Israel forgets the awesome saving work of God. I mean, the plagues, death of the firstborn son, human and animal, the parting of the Red Sea, the wiping out of Pharaoh's chariots and army. Here they are a few months into wandering the Sinai Desert and Moses has gone up the Sinai Mountain to receive the law from God and they miss him and they turn to false idols. And God is upset. But we see Moses here as the mediator standing in the breach before God's wrath, who intends to wipe out his people, to punish them severely, wipe them out. And so Moses begins his conversation with God. So he wants to, um, he speaks on our behalf. He wants to, he pleads with God. So he has a bit of a, a structure. First he says, Lord, it's bad PR. What do the Egyptians think that you are what kind of a God takes his people, all these wonderful works, takes them out into the desert to have them die? Is that a faithful God? And then he gets him with the, now you are a faithful God. You made promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God relents. Notice too, Moses in his utter humility did not accept God's very tantalizing carrot that said, I'm going to wipe them out and start it with you. You'll be, you'll be, um, the new Adam, Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob, as it were. And Moses says, no. They're your people, Lord, your people, not my people, your people. Tremendous humility. Then we come to Jesus. Now, again, I'm just going to pick up on a, a, a parallel between the Old Testament and New. Jesus is referring to who testifies on his behalf. His point he's making is he speaks with greater authority than Moses because he's greater than Moses. He is a new Moses. He's the new mediator between God and humanity. And so what does he do? Now, we don't understand God's wrath to mean we, God is out to get us. When Jesus, the new mediator, ever faithful and humble, will die for us, shed his blood for us, it's not to appease a wrathful, angry God. It is to take upon himself the sinful burden of the human race, which we do deserve death by our own choice, not God's desire. And Jesus pays the price. His resurrection confirms and seals that victory and God's ever-present mercy. And so, as we continue through Lent, we're just a bit more than halfway through right now. We know we may have some difficulty celebrating the sacred rites in our churches, which would be very sad. The diocese will express how we might possibly not have people present, but how we might do that as priests and get it out to you in some way. I don't know what that means, but we will ce celebrate them even if it means we have to do it apart from each other. But nonetheless, it doesn't take away the fact that the Holy Week is coming. It is coming. We celebrate the great Paschal mystery. It means his death and rising. Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday in the tomb, Resurrection Sunday. So I think it's good that we ponder you know, the great extent of Christ's love for us, that he would go through what he went through. So even if we don't have the opportunity to be together in these walls, we have plenty of opportunity to ponder the Lord's suffering for us. Not to make us feel guilty, but to enter into, to experience with Christ his terrible suffering, that we might appreciate, not in guilt, what he went through for us, and experience remorse, remorse, sorrow, not guilt, sorrow for our sins, and the realization that he did that, that we might be forgiven and restored to God, the Father, and to each other. I'm just looking at the psalm here. Let me, if I may have to get it here. Okay. Okay, what's the, oh, 
Remember us, O Lord, as you forgave your people. Israel forgot that God did so much for them and did not give thanks. So perhaps a little experience in the midst of what we're going through, and we may think, what to get thankful for? Business was closing, schools are closed, churches are closed, I mean, for, for worship, uh, all kind of things going on, threat of corona, coronavirus, will I get it next, will loved one get it, how serious it is, all these questions, all these fears and concerns are going through. And St. Paul says, not in today's scripture, rejoice always, <laughs> give thanks. What? Let's just, let's just try God. So I, I suggest we get up to tomorrow morning, give God three reasons you're thankful. Okay? Every morning, get up, of the, look over the past day, three reasons you're thankful. Because what do we do here? It's called Eucharist, giving thanks. Okay? And by giving an attitude of thankfulness, it helps us deal with the challenges we have to face whether it's coronavirus or whatever it might be that comes down through our lives. So let us be a realistic people, but a thankful people. Our God is good. Our God is good, and he will see us through this. Please rise for petitions, intercessions. God, we turn to you now as our source of life and hope and strength. Listen to our prayers and comfort us and console us. Please respond, Lord have mercy. For all the church during this Lenten season, may the Lord increase in us hearts for sharing and serit and self-denial. Let us pray. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. For all who serve either as elected or appointed authorities, may the God of wisdom bless them with the skills and gifts necessary for true servant leadership. Let us pray. Lord, have, have mercy. For all who are sick in our community, May the healing consolation of Christ be upon them and make them whole. Let us pray. Lord, have, have mercy. For all of us assembled here, may the steadfast love and mercy God drew us ever closer to him through the life and death of Christ, his son. Let us pray. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all who have died, May they come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory, especially Ed Wozniki. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Loving God, we come before you now, a humble and needy people. Listen to our prayers and your graciousness respond. We seek your perfect will, but we know, Lord, you desire above all to keep your people whole and safe, especially from the poison of sin, but also we ask for protection from coronavirus and all other forms of harm. We seek all in Jesus' name, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To goodness, we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Dear goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It'll become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. We offer to you, O Lord, these gifts which you have yourself, which you yourself have bestowed. May they attest to your care as creator, for this our mortal body and affect in us, infect in us the healing that brings us immortality. Through Christ the Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, 
with St. Agnes, among all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. My sisters and brothers, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And serve with each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May this sacrament we have received purify us, we pray, O Lord, and grant your servants freedom from all blame, that those bound by a guilty conscience may glory in the fullness of heavenly remedy through Christ the Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. We are defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, that thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust in the hell Satan, the other evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace, glorifying the Lord through your lives. Thanks be to God. May God walk with you and be with, with you always. Take good care. Lord of all holy kindliness, Lord of all grace, your hands swift to welcome, your arms to embrace. Be there at our homing and give us, we pray, your love in our hearts, Lord, at the eve of the day. Lord of all gentleness, Lord of all calm, whose voice is contentment, whose presence is balm, be there at our sleeping and give us, we pray, your peace in our hearts, Lord, at the end of the day.